Hello, my name is Dr. John Monford. I'm a physician scientist working at the University of Colorado Anschutz Medical Campus. Um, I'm funded through the VA and I've been asked to speak with you about the need to fund basic science researchers. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about my studies, but I think I, I, I would boil down the problem to one of context that physicians in the bench um, can take models and therapies and translate them to the bedside in ways that um, individuals who don't see patients on a day-to-day -day basis can't. Um, and the example I'm going to use related to my research, um, let me pull up my screen here. So traditional models of, of what I study, which is chronic kidney disease or CKD, which is an enormous uh, burden in the U.S. population and around the world and responsible for consuming health budgets worldwide. So when you look at the literature, uh, what people publish, their models of chronic kidney disease, they, 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 they model it in a rodent with surgical or non-surgical means, but there's a problem with all these models, namely that they are very poorly effective at creating a, a CKD syndrome that approximate what, it, what a human has. Um, and a lot of them are um, insults and injuries that don't actually occur in humans. And I think for this reason, uh, this is why a lot of the preclinical therapies have failed in their translation from bench to bedside. Now, I became interested in um, a toxin that has been responsible for outbreaks of kidney disease in the developing world. And this is, uh, these are publications looking at uh, outbreak of this uh, disease called aristolochic acid nephropathy. Uh, in the Balkans in the 90s and 2000s, and it's currently um, happening in China. This is a toxin that when it gets ingested, it's specific for kidney, the kidney, and it, it basically destroys the kidney and causes a lot of kidney damage. And this is a, a kidney that's been opened up and it's very pale and damaged. And these are histologic images of the kidney with um, big dilated tubules, which are bad, and immune cells that come into the kidney. And um, this is a very nasty toxin and um, responsible for a lot of unknown causes of, of kidney injury and chronic kidney disease. But what I've done is I've taken this model and done something different with it. And I, I'm able to, to recapitulate a human version of, uh, of CKD in, a, in an animal that is, that is much improved compared to the traditional models. And I give animals this uh, toxin, aristolochic acid, I give it to them really slowly because chronic kidney disease in humans is a process. It's not a discrete event. And I think that's what these models miss. So I start out by giving um, these animals low dose toxin to induce acute kidney injury. And then I taper the toxin dose and they establish chronic kidney disease. And um, when I look, these animals have remarkably consistent weight change, kidney atrophy. These are normal kidneys right here. And these are atrophic or very small kidneys that look like human kidneys with kidney disease. And then markers we use in humans that I use in clinic every day, blood, urea, nitrogen, creatinine levels are elevated just like they are in human beings. And, uh, blood counts are low, um, which is something we also see in human beings. Um, and another interesting thing I use are these devices um, that can estimate glomerular filtration rate, which is how we estimate what kidney function is in an animal, uh, in an anesthetized animal. And um, I'm able to put this on a normal mouse and measure baseline um, skin levels of fluorescence, inject a marker, which I can detect through the skin, and then allow it to clear over about an hour. And this is what a normal kidney, uh, a, norm, a mouse with normal kidneys looks like. But when I deploy this in my, my animals, the, the curve never dips down. The marker stays in the, in the blood and stays in the, in the skin because it can no longer be cleared by the kidneys. And so this is a nice non-invasive way to track uh, disease in my animals. Um, and it shows remarkably consistent results. Namely, if I look at one animal and track it throughout the model, um, it's, it, it correlates from beginning to end, whether it has higher injury or lower injury. And, and most rodent models of kidney disease can't do this. And I think this is more, um, a lot more translatable model uh, to study any number of things um, when it comes to chronic kidney disease. And so to sum it up, I think, that, um, I think that the most important thing that we as physician scientists do is provide context, context to um, preclinical studies 
so that we can actually take these therapies to the bedside. Um, thank you very much. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video and thank you for your continued support of physician scientists. To write your senator or representative, please go to this link. Below the main message, please write, increase support for physician scientists, bridge funding and grants. Thank you.